Yvette Cooper, Andy Burnham, Liz Kendall and Jeremy Corbyn, who is the favourite to win, will find out who gets the top job on Saturday. Our political guru, Norman Smith, is right here. Fill us in over the last few months what's been happening. Well, Vic, let's be honest, this contest started out kind of as Dullsville Central, a particularly bad edition of Book at Bedtime. Now it's become more like sort of the wacky races and, you know, we political pundits are kind of uh, rubbing our eyes and wondering what on earth is going on. So let's have a look. We've got the four candidates here lined up on the starting line. So we've got Jeremy Corbyn on his rather retro 1980s bicycle. We've got uh, Andy Burnham, the Northern Charger. We've got Liz Kendall in a sort of shiny super duper Blair mobile. And we've got uh, Yvette Cooper in a rather safe, sensible saloon about town. Now, Jeremy Corbyn only got to the starting line because Labour MPs thought, well, we'll nominate him. We don't really support him, but we'll nominate him just to hear his arguments. And he, he fell back pretty quickly because most people regarded him as a complete no-hoper. Liz Kendall, in a sort of super-duper Blairmobile, was the first to declare, first out of the blocks, but let's be honest, her sort of Blairite message didn't really go down well in the party, and her campaign never really got going, and she, too, sort of fizzled out and faded back. Andy Burnham, the sort of northern charger, he went to the front as the favourite because his message was, look, I'm not going to be the Westminster as usual politician. I'm a northern lad. I'm going to represent the whole of Britain. But he too fell back when there were flip-flops and doubts over big issues like whether he would oppose benefit cuts. Yvette Cooper, who'd been sort of pottering along very sensibly and safely, last couple of weeks she seems to have slammed her car into top gear, burst forward by taking the attack to the government over refugees. But I think the thinking is she's left it too late. So she too has begun to sort of fall back. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Jeremy Corbyn, who we'd all written off, has been busily peddling away, hoovering up the votes of people who are not Labour Party members, but who've paid the three pounds to have a say and getting them to vote for him. And all the signs are that he may have got enough of them to back him to give him victory. But, you know, let's be honest, there are four of them. It's like the wacky races. Anything could happen. We're just waiting for Muttley to turn up. OK, um, we've had an email from one viewer saying, I, I haven't got my ballot paper. I want to vote. There's two hours left. She's cross. Yeah. I mean, that is a complaint from, from one or two people, isn't it? The whole way this race has been run has been a bureaucratic nightmare for the Labour Party. Not just because some people at the death are saying, hang on a sec, haven't got my ballot paper. Now, you know, there are estimates, it could be a few hundred, could even be thousands. Mm. But the real bureaucratic nightmare is you've got all these new supporters signing up and there are a lot of suspicions that a lot of these people, they're not really Labour Party supporters. A lot of them might be Conservatives, some might be Greens, some might be Trotskyists. They just want to cause a bit of trouble. And so the Labour Party has, got, has had to go into this extraordinary checking process, which has dragged on and on and on, and has caused all sorts of consternation. OK, right. Neck on the block time. Mr Norman Smith. Oh, God. Did you have a middle name, by the way? I do. What's Stuart. OK, Mr Norman Stuart Smith. Who is going to be the next Labour leader? Can I warn you, I only ever bet on one thing and it is the Eurovision Song Contest and I always get it wrong so I would pay no attention to what I'm about to okay, say. Okay, but say it anyway. Okay, I'm going to say Jeremy Corbyn. I'm going to say that because, you know, every Labour MP I've spoken to over the past few days, they are already game planning for life under Corbyn. In fact, one of Ed Miliband's top people just yesterday said to me that he thought Jeremy Corbyn would win his words by a country mile. 